What's going on everybody? This is Phil with Millennial Money Gains and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video we are going to be comparing three different dividend ETFs. These dividend ETFs could be amongst the top tier and the most common dividend ETFs in my opinion. So we're going to definitely compare the three and see which one has been a better investment overall for including growth, including dividends, and just seeing which one is the safest and best performing dividend ETF. If you guys are hyped for this video, please make sure you smash that like button. Also, if you want to join the family, hit that subscribe button down below. We post videos just like this one at least two times per week where we do dividend analysis videos and you guys can follow along with my dividend portfolio on the journey to $100,000. So if that's something that interests you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. But now let's hop right into the video. So first up, we have QYLD, which is a Global X Funds, Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. In the past year, this one is down about 11.5%, currently trading at $20.70. So let's check out, first of all, let's check out the dividends. So it has a dividend yield, which is an A+. Plus. A dividend growth rate which is a C so it does pay a very high dividend of 11.77 percent it does have dividend growth for the past three years they do pay a monthly dividend and they pay 20 cents per share every single month so it's definitely very helpful to have a monthly paying dividend if you are looking for that passive income on a monthly basis now that 20 cents a share that they that seeking alpha has here is just an average they do sometimes pay more than that they do sometimes pay less than that this is a covered call etf which means they take profits from their call options and they pay that out as a dividend so the dividend does vary from month to month now let's go take a look at their holdings so they have almost 50% in technology holdings, about 18% in communications, another 15% in consumer cyclical, and about almost 6% in healthcare, about 5% in consumer defensive, 4% in industrials, 1.5% in financials, and 1% in utilities. Let's take a look at the top 10 holdings. First, we have Apple. At about almost 13%, we have Microsoft, about 10%, Amazon at almost 7%, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, Tesla, Google, NVIDIA, now the Google, Adobe. They do have total holdings of 103, and their top 10 holdings make up about 55% of their total holdings. So those are solid companies right there to hold for the top 10. Now remember they are a covered, this is a covered call ETF. Next up we have SCHD. This is Charles Schwab Strategic Trust, Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, which is up over almost 12, 20% in the past one year. Let's go on to their dividends. So they do have a dividend yield, which is an A+, plus, which is an A, and a dividend growth rate, which is a B-. minus. So their dividend yield is a much lower than QYLDs, which is 3.16%. They do have a five-year dividend growth rate of 12.32% and a dividend growth for nine years. They do pay $0.62 cents on a quarterly basis. So... Let's take a look at their holdings. So obviously we have more growth in this one and less of a dividend yield in this one compared with QYLD. So they have almost 22% in financials, 18% in industrials, 15.5% in technology. They have 15% in consumer def defensive, about 13% in healthcare almost a little over 7% in consumer cyclical, 
5% in communications, 2% in basic material, and 2% in energy. So let's take a look at their top 10 holdings. If number one is Merck, which holds about 4% of the, is the, their holdings. Next up, we have Coca-Cola, Amgen, Verizon, PepsiCo, Pfizer, IBM, Broadcom, Cisco, and te Texas Instruments. Mm -hmm. so they do hold a 100, 105 stocks. And the total temper top 10 holdings are about 41% of their total holdings. So this one is definitely more growth compared to QYLD. And I did realize that I just forgot to look at the expense ratio for QYLD, but for Charles Schwab here, SCHD is 0.06%. Now let's go to QYLD, and they are at 0.6%. So QYLD is a lot more expensive to hold than Charles Schwab. Now the last one, but not least, is JEPI. This is J-E-P-I is a ticker symbol. J.P. Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. So this one is currently trading at $60.63. It is up about 8.5% on the year. Let's take a look at their dividends. So they do have dividend yield of A+, plus, dividend growth rate of C+. Plus. So their dividend yield is about 7.5%. They do have dividend growth for one year. They do pay a monthly dividend of about $0.38 cents per share. So not quite as high as QYLD, but higher than SCHD. Although the growth was about in between both of these ETFs. Now let's take a look at their expense ratio which is about 0.35%, which is right in between those two. Now let's take a look at their holdings. So they have about 12% in industrials, 12% in consumer defensive, 12% in healthcare, almost 12% in financials, 8% in technology, 7% in utilities, and others. Their top 10 holdings are about 16.48% of their total holdings. They do have 105 total holdings here. So they have Ma MasterCard, Microsoft, DT Energy. So those are their main holdings. So what do I think about these three plays? So I think each one has their benefits and each one has their faults, right? They all have flaws and they all have benefits. So QYLD, why would you choose this one? This one is to get that monthly passive income at a high rate. So this one, you really the growth is not there at all. If we go back and we look at the past five years for QYLD, there is no growth, if any, Let's take a look at the past five years. So they haven't been around for a full five years. So we can't look at that. But looking at this the past year alone, this one is the only ETF that we covered today in the red. So if you're looking for just a simple passive income dividend just to get that monthly income, QYLD will be the one choice for you. If you're looking for a more growth dividend income, SCHD is going to be for you because they did have a pretty high growth rate of almost 20% in that in the past year. So this one is good quality dividends with some added growth. And JEPI is if you want to meet them in the middle, you get moderate growth as well as moderate dividends, which is really pretty high compared to these individual stocks or other ETFs. So JEPI is looking like the way to go for me. Um, I do like the holdings that are in 
Charles Schwab a bit better than on Jeppe, but I think Jeppe is you got the best of both worlds if you want passive income and passive dividend income on a monthly basis as well as getting that growth. So I may have to kind of alter my portfolio here just because of reading more into these ETFs. I think there are better opportunities for me than getting that QYLD dividend, which is just really I was just getting because I loved it. It was just so high. But there may be other stronger opportunities for me in terms of different dividend ETFs. But if you guys took anything away from this video, please make sure you smash that like button. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about these ETFs. If you guys are invested in any or if you want to become invested in any. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel. We post videos just like this one at least two times per week. And you guys can follow my dividend journey on the road to $100,000 dividend portfolio. I appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!